I'm here at the National Weather Service office in Hanford, California. And this building houses the Dobson Ozone Spectrophotometer. It's just one of many scientific instruments used by the National Weather Service. And if you'd like to know more about this instrument, stick around for a behind the scenes look at the Dobson Ozone Spectrophotometer. Jim Anderson is a meteorologist at the Weather Service office in Hanford. One of his responsibilities is to perform ozone measurements. I've been a meteorologist with the Weather Service for six years. I'm one of the Dobson focal points at this office. Many people have never heard of Dobson spectrophotometers as it is a rarely taken observation. To put it into perspective and how rare it is to see this equipment, there are just seven of these Dobsons in the United States and only 16 worldwide in the cooperative Dobson network. The reason we take these ozone measurements is to keep track of how much UV radiation is reaching the surface of the Earth and how that amount changes over time. The sun emits large amounts of electromagnetic radiation in all directions. The human eye is only sensitive to a small fraction of that radiation called visible light. Just below visible light is ultraviolet, which is divided into three bands, UVA, UVB, and UVC. The Earth's ozone layer helps to protect us from some of those bands. UVA is not blocked by the ozone layer and accounts for 95% of the solar UV energy reaching the Earth's surface. UVB is mostly absorbed by the ozone layer. It accounts for the remaining 5% solar UV energy reaching the Earth's surface and can have harmful effects in large doses. UVC is the most damaging type of UV radiation. However, no measurable amount reaches the Earth's surface because it is completely absorbed by ozone in the upper atmosphere. Between my other assigned responsibilities, I perform ozone measurements three times a day. These are roughly taken at 18, 20, and 22 Zulu. Jim prepares the Dobson for taking measurements by opening the dome and installing the periscope. After adjustments to the periscope, it will channel the sunlight into the spectrophotometer. Once setup is complete, he loads the computer program which guides him through the proper steps for taking measurements while recording the results. Four, three, two, one. Zero. After each measurement, the computer instructs Jim to move some levers and adjust a dial before continuing. Three, two, one. Once all the measurements Zero. are complete, the information is saved and sent by the computer to the Earth System Research Laboratory in Boulder, Colorado. The average of the measurements was 367.8 Dobson units. Each Dobson unit equals 10 micrometers of pure ozone. That means there's a total thickness of only 3.68 millimeters of ozone above us. I personally will always feel special to have been able to take part in the important history of the Dobson program, as probably the generations of meteorologists that took ozone observations did before me. In the future, when I'm gone, someone will take over where I left off, continuing the rich tradition of the Weather Service's commitment to monitoring the Earth's ozone levels. And if you'd like to know more information about the Dobson program, check out the Earth Systems Research Laboratory website at esrl.noaa.gov. For the National Weather Service, I'm Mark Ganey. Thanks for watching.